These books changed my life and they're changing the lives of thousands of people all around the world. And if you've ever experienced any one of these symptoms or conditions, there's a good chance that it could benefit you as well because there's a good chance that you've got some kind of gut issue. In this video, I'm gonna give you an overview of what is the GAPS diet, what you can eat, what you can't eat, how to do it. But for the rest of it, you'll have to grab the books, the blue book and the yellow book, which the links will be in the description. The term GAPS is an acronym from the best-selling book title, Gut and Psychology Syndrome, which was written by Dr. Natalia Campbell McBride, who has a degree in medicine and postgraduate degrees in neurology and also nutrition. Natasha is a big brain. She discovered that there was a link between nutrition and the learning difficulties that her child was having. So she transformed his diet and she saw a radical transformation in his health. She was aware that she was not the only parent that was in the same situation. So she went on a mission to support other families to heal the same way. She then created the first GAPS book in 2004 after working with hundreds of children and adults with neurological and psychiatric conditions, such as autism spectrum disorder, ADD, ADHD, depression, dyspraxia, dyslexia, obsessive compulsive disorder, schizophrenia, and other neurological and psychiatric conditions and disorders. Since then, the term GAPS also applies to another book she wrote called Gut and Physiology Syndrome, because she discovered all autoimmunity begins in the gut. These conditions include, but are not limited to the following, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes type one, celiac disease, osteoarthritis, lupus, food intolerances, allergies. Of course, there's a bucket load of other symptoms and conditions, but these are some of the most common and some of the ones she found great success in treating with diet alone. So when we look at GAPS, GAPS is considered a condition that describes a collection of different symptoms and conditions. Ultimately, it speaks of this well-known connection between the gut, the brain, and the immune system. The GAPS diet is designed to strengthen the gut lining and also restore microbial balance. This is achieved by removing inflammatory triggers and replacing those with essential nutrients to provide the building blocks for healing. The diet also focuses on repairing the gut, which actually contains neurological tissue to make those feel good, happy hormones. What it's most known for is its support in healing intestinal permeability, AKA leaky gut. Intestinal permeability, most commonly known as leaky gut, is a major feature in immune dysfunction in poor health because all that content that should be contained within the intestines until they're sufficiently digested are leaking through that gut wall into the bloodstream partially digested. Then the body creates this inflammatory immune response against the undigested molecules. And chronic low-grade inflammation can disrupt cellular energy production, cell-to-cell -cell communication, autoimmunity, blood sugar irregularities, and overall stress in the body. The GAPS diet has three core principles. Remove, replace, restore. Remove inflammatory triggers, replace with healing nutrients, and restore gut microbiome. Again, all the information is in these books with references, scientific papers, all that jazz. I'm just trying to be the middleman condensing all this information into a video for people that have the attention span of squirrels. The GAPS diet is based on this thing called the specific carbohydrate diet, which was developed in the 1920s by Dr. Sidney Haas to treat celiac disease. So yeah, being gluten-free has been uncool for about a hundred years, but Dr. Natasha put her own spin on the diet to make it specific and more targeted to gut health issues. So it's kind of like a gut healing version of the paleo keto diet, but far more more powerful in my opinion. Before we go into what you can eat, there are a few different types of GAPS diets. The two main ones are the full GAPS diet, and then you've got the introduction to the GAPS diet, also known as intro GAPS. More recently, there has been new additions to the GAPS diet gut gang, including the carnivore no plant GAPS diet, which is what I've been dabbling into, ketogenic GAPS, more plant GAPS, and the liquid fasting GAPS. The blue book, Gut and Physiology Syndrome, goes into those in more depth. Okay, back to the intro and full GAPS. Now the full GAPS diet is actually something that's recommended for people to do for one to two years. If you've got chronic symptoms and conditions, it's gonna take some time to heal it, especially with the gut. It's not an overnight thing. It's taken a while for it to get damaged. So it's gonna take a while for it to heal and that's why she recommends people do it for two years. So for me embarking on this journey, sure, I've had some results in a 30 to 120 day period, but the real results happen over a period of time. It's basically a whole lifestyle shift, really. That might sound like a long time, one to two years, but if you've spent more than two decades of your life with health problems like myself, then that sounds like a pretty good trade-off. What I've found though, is if you're really desperate and you're really committed to improving your health or your conditions or symptoms or situation, 
situation, you will do anything no matter the circumstances. And that's the point that I got to. Maybe you are there, maybe you're not there yet, but it is a critical point that a lot of people will have to hit really before they take any action. And I hope that this video, I guess, gives you some impetus or a kick at the butt to just do it if you've been waiting for it. You can do it! If people aren't willing to give their comforts up for a short period of time, then they don't want it enough. And that was me. I didn't want it hard enough until I had my own screw this moment. Anyway, things you can eat, things you can't eat. Let's start with what you can't eat. Anything. No, I'm kidding. There's a lot of options on this. The obvious things, processed food, artificial sweeteners, additives, colors, preservatives, sugar, seed oils, grains. Yes, this even includes pseudo grains like quinoa and amaranth because they have starch. Because you can't have starch either. That's right, no potatoes. You think you're depressed? Try not eating potatoes for four months. I'm just kidding, but starches are off the menu in all form. And soy, because in GAPS people, soy is a no-no. Here are the things you can eat. The GAPS diet is a predominantly animal-based diet because of the healing power of animal foods, meat stocks, the connective tissues, all the nutrients that are in the organs, etc., etc. And they also seem to be the most least triggering foods for people especially those that are sensitive to plants which are apparently trying to kill us. They have things like oxalates, anti-nutrients and other sorts of things. Some people can tolerate them but some GAPS people really can't. So most of your diet should be based around meat stocks which is bone broth that's been cooked for a couple of hours instead of a long time because you get all those beautiful healing nutrients, the collagen, the connective tissue, the amino acids, you get glycogen, you get all sorts of things that are incredibly anti-inflammatory, healing and soothing for that gut. That's basically at the bottom, that's the main pillar of the diet. If you've seen my videos, you see me drinking a lot of meat stock and that's because it is so good for you. Meat, organs, fish, poultry, eggs, fermented dairy, dairy, pork, herbs, veggies, a combination of boiled, raw and fermented depending on how sensitive your gut is. And the fermented are so good because the probiotics are one of the most important things of the GAPS diet. Then things like nuts, seeds, fruit, honey, they're all allowed, but they should be eaten with moderation. If there was a GAPS food pyramid, it would be right at the top of there. And again, honey is okay as long as you don't have candida overgrowth or SIBO. There's a full list of things you can and can't eat, and I won't go into it because we'll be here forever, but I've put a link down below and you can check that link on that website and you can see all the things you can and can't eat. To some that might sound restrictive, to some that might sound like a lot of options, and honestly, you can recreate your favorite meals on the GAPS diet in all sorts of ways. The plan, once you're done with the GAPS diet and you feel like you're able to tolerate more foods, then you can slowly introduce things from there. Obviously never going back to crap or processed foods if you ate that way previously, but maybe you could include things like grains down the track or that sort of stuff. But most people find they typically stick closely to a full GAPS diet or a Western A price type diet or ancestral type diet because they feel so good on it. Okay, now you know about the GAPS diet, let's talk about the intro GAPS diet. The intro GAPS diet is not necessary for everyone. Some people can just slot right into the GAPS diet, but some people that are very sensitive like myself are recommended to go right through the intro phase, which is a series of six stages that slowly introduce foods as you're able to tolerate until you're ready for the full GAPS diet. I personally recommend everyone to go through it at some stage if you can, because it is not only very healing, but it's also detoxifying, and it is a very powerful way to restore health to your gut, give yourself a bit of a reset, why not? I tell you, having this framework is just such a relief because I know exactly what food I can introduce at what time, what symptoms am I looking for to indicate, hey, this is working, hey, this is not working, how long it should take, etc., etc. Game changer. Because sometimes when people are introducing foods, they choose the wrong ones, they don't know how long to wait, all these things. So the framework's there. If you have food allergies, intolerances, or chronic conditions, this is where I would personally start. Like I said, there are six stages and some people just fly through them. Could take them a couple of weeks. Some people, need to go through and it could take months. Some people even years on it. So it just depends how severe your condition is. Hang in there, you got this. What I do recommend is working with a qualified GAPS practitioner to go through these stages. It is much better working with someone. I currently consult with someone here and there where I need to. I have linked them down below. You can check out them and their team. They're incredible 
bunch of practitioners that can help with your gut health and also the GAPS diet. Because it ain't easy doing this alone and it's way easier doing it with the support and guidance of someone that has helped others just like you. Stage one of the intro GAPS diet is to smash that like button and subscribe. Stage one, it's all about meat stock, baby. Load up on that meat stock. You wanna drink large quantities of this throughout the day and with meals. I've made a video on my channel about how to make meat stock, so definitely check that out. It is very different to having bone broth. Bone broth is not recommended on the GAPS diet. The longer you cook bone broths, the more histamines are released which your immune system can react to. So instead of having a 24 hour bone broth, you're having a three hour meat stock. They're incredibly healing, full of good gelatinous goodness, collagen, glycogen, all these connective tissues, these nutrients that are just so good for the gut lining. Chicken for a lot of people seems to be very gentle, whereas some people that react to chicken need to use lamb or beef. And if you are sensitive to the chicken, I recommend trying like a pasture fed one, one that's not fed corn or soy. Not always accessible or easy to get, but give it a try, give it a crack. Free range organic is best, but if you don't have access to that, just do what you can, of course. Same with beef and lamb and everything, grass fed and finished, organic, they are best, but if it's not possible, just start where you're at. Some people in this phase, they just do meat and meat stock. This is kind of what I was doing in the Carnival Gaps version, and the meat you're having is meat on the bone. So it's not just a meat that you got from a barbie and you cooked it or whatever, or fried on the stove. This is something that like, let's say you got a whole chook, you chuck it in a pot, cook it for three hours with the liquid, with a bit of chicken feet, and the broth that you get from that, the stock, that's what you drink, and then you eat the chicken meat or lamb shanks or beef bones that are close to the bone, that have got all those nutrients on the bones plus the connective tissue, you're eating the meat that you boiled in that and that is way easier to digest. You don't include proper meat until later down the track once your gut is feeling better. And I've tested it. Meat that's been cooked in meat stock or in water or boiled meat is actually easier in my gut. Even if the meat's been cooked tallow, gut fat on the stove, roasted, barbecued, I've tried all the different things. It is easier on the gut when it is boiled, cooked in meat stock. At this stage, you can include boiled vegetables. They have to be very boiled. Things like zucchini, carrot, broccoli if you can do that cauliflower, pumpkin, leek, even some herbs like rosemary. But from my experience, meat stock is tasty on its own. Just a bit of salt and water is really all you need because if you've got a good cut of meat, it's very flavorsome. Another important thing is probiotic foods. Like I said, remove, replace, restore. You wanna restore here as soon as possible and bringing those good bacteria back to life in your gut is gonna help tremendously. And what you wanna do here is have probiotics either in the form of things like sauerkraut juice, or if you can tolerate dairy, fermented dairy. Ideally, it's yogurt that you've made at home for 24 hours. I will make a video recipe on that, so when that's live, it will be linked down here, but there are also recipes in the GAPS book too. This is a mistake that I've made on my GAPS diet journey, is not having enough of this. Heavy on the meat stock, heavy on the meat, but not heavy enough on the probiotics. Some people's guts are so sensitive that you can only introduce a drop at a time and then slowly increase. Some people are lucky and don't have to do that, but if you know you're a sensitive person, just start small and slowly increase. If your body's still having breakouts, diarrhea, things like that, then try and remove all the veggies, just start with the meat, the carnival gaps, and remove any of the dairy and just start with the meat stock and then slowly introducing. Again, more detailed guide is in the book. At this stage, some people can also drink tea like chamomile, ginger, or mint. Stage two is where we start stacking all the goodies from stage one and adding new foods if you're able to tolerate it. Here is where you can try raw egg yolks. You'll keep increasing the sour cream, fermented yogurt, fermented dairy that you've been making, also sauerkraut juice, any fermented veggies that you've been having too. Here you can also give ghee a crack. Ghee is clarified butter, so it's butter that's had most of the milk solids and proteins removed, which is easier for some people to digest than butter. I find that ghee is easier for me to digest than butter. I've introduced both and they both seem to be okay, but ghee is always number one, the winner. Stage three, we're stacking again. Here, we're gonna try and add a little bit of avocado. Avocado is high in histamines, so not everyone can tolerate avocado. Little bits of avocado, I recommend starting with a bit of a teaspoon. If you can tolerate nuts, this is where you can introduce them. I'd start with a little bit, start with eating literally one nut, see how your body responds, and then slowly increase. But you can start making delicious things like gaps, 
breads and Gaps pancakes and Gaps muffins. You can also start scrambling eggs in duck fat or ghee and you can add some fermented veggies to it. Stage four, this is where you can start having roasted and grilled meat. Ideally, you wanna avoid the bits that are brown, yes, no searing yet. I've been roasted so many times in my comments for not searing my meat properly. And there's been a reason for that. It's because seared meat is not as easy to digest. Here you can add extra virgin olive oil. Make sure it is not oil that has been cut with other rubbish like seed oils or canola or vegetable oil, only pure olive oil. You can also add fresh pressed juice, but just start slowly with a bit of carrot juice. Don't go overboard. Start with a couple teaspoons or a teaspoon or a fraction of a teaspoon. See how your body goes. This helps with the detoxification process for the GAPS diet because you will experience things like die off, detox, you probably feel sick before you feel better and that's pretty normal. If it prolongs, then speak to a practitioner. Stage five, if all the other stages are good in gravy, then you can start having some boiled or stewed apple. You can also try some raw veggies, some of the softer ones, but you can start introducing, see how you go reacting to different ones. If the carrot juice is tolerated from stage four, then you can start adding a little bit of fruit juice, a bit of apple, a bit of grape, whatever your body is gonna to tolerate. I recommend starting with apple, but at this stage, no citrus. Keep baking, keep creating recipes. You can try dried fruit now too. This basically sums up the process of the GAPS intro diet. So my next goal, my next phase on my journey is to speed through this process as fast as I can, but as slowly as I need to. And even after this intro phase, you wanna apply principles from this into your daily life, into the full GAPS diet, such as daily meat stock, lots of probiotic foods, et cetera, et cetera. When you're introducing foods as per the full gaps, this is where you wanna start testing the foods as well. A little note, when you're introducing these foods, you wanna make sure you wait 24 to 72 hours, depending on how your body responds and reacts in that severity. And after you've tried that one food, if you get a good reaction, keep going with that same amount, slowly increase. Or if you're not getting a good reaction, park it, come back to it later in a couple of weeks time, three to four weeks. In terms of what else you need to do, don't just do the diet. You've also got to change other things in your life as well. So if you're around toxic mold, get that stuff sorted. If you drink crappy water, drink good filtered water. If you're constantly overexposed to EMFs, reduce or remove them from your life. And you can also have supplements, things like cod liver oil, and you can do cool protocols like coffee enemas, which I'm working on a video to share with you all about. They are incredible for that detoxification process. Once you've done that full GAPS diet, then you can choose where you wanna move on to from there. And I've had a lot of friends that have successfully gone through the GAPS diet. They were kind of in my same situation, some a lot worse, some not as bad, and they moved through the full GAPS over a period of about two years, and now they can eat like what I would call a normal person. Normal person is someone that eats healthy, not a normal person that eats junk food, of course. But if you're super sensitive, then the GAPS diet might not be enough. And that's why there's protocols like the no plant GAPS diet, the more plant GAPS diet, etc. So if you wanna learn more about the Carnival GAPS diet and how I've been using that and how other people are using it to turn around even chronic conditions, check out this video here. Yep, I made another video too, enjoy.